start recording though to get some good stuff. You mean like right now? Yeah, totally. Okay, Are we recording it. right now? We're recording. Can you hear me? I can hear okay, you. Okay, cool. Is this good good volumes? Excellent volume. Mm, all right. Well, you're you're going you come a little hot there. Uh, well, it's not that I have a loud voice or anything. Nothing like that. It's not like rude. That. Rude. Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing well. And welcome to Popcorn Finance, where we discuss finance and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. Today, we're going to hop into an episode of Pop-Up Debates. And I got it right, because I always mess up the title of my own show constantly, constantly. And I'm joined by the one and only Bethany Bayless, co-host of the Money Millhouse Podcast. How are you doing? I am doing so great. How are you? Uh, the, you're helping me with your energy because I'm tired right now and now I feel re-energized. I feel like I'm going to not be able to sleep because I, I'm, I'm so excited for this. So amped up. It's so amped. So amped up. You may recognize Bethany. She was on episode 83, Never Have I Ever, recorded live at FinCon in Orlando, Florida. It was amazing, but she had lost her voice. <laughs> so she came here for redemption. She came here to put her best foot forward and let everyone know what her voice actually sounds like. We Well, here's the thing that I really love about this is we said that we were going to do this mm-hmm. and we did it. That's right. We said we were going to have me back so that we could really, I could try to match your voice with the deepness and the richness of it. And here we are. I'm happy to have you and here. And we did it. We're going to do this. We're true to our word. Oh, yeah. So let me give you the rules of the okay, pop-up debate. I'm ready. We each have one minute to argue our point, our side of a given argument. Okay. Okay? You're the guest. You get to choose what side you want to go with. And I have to argue the other side, whether I want to or not. Okay? All right. I'm so ready for this. So today's topic is frugality sliding into cheapness. Okay? There's a story that Bethany told of some person, some anonymous person, who would wash and dry their paper towels after they were used so that they can use them again and again and again. And we're going to debate whether that is frugal or that is cheap. So Bethany, as a guest, what side of this argument are you going to take? I'm going to take the cheap side. Okay. I am forced then to say that this is frugal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so that's what we're going with. So, this is going to be awesome. And to keep you honest, I'm going to All start right, the timer. Please do. Keep to take this out of your hands. Okay. Starting now, you have to argue your side of is reusing paper towels cheap or frugal and you're going with cheap. <laughs> Starting the microwave right now. Um... This is a cheap concept. If you're going to buy paper towels, the entire idea is that they are disposable, which means that you have less laundry to do for your house. If you buy paper towels for the cheap, cheap price of $3.99 or whatever per roll, and you reuse those paper towels, it is cheap. You can handle in your budget $4 for a roll of toilet paper or... Right, well, paper towels, paper towels, paper towels. Please do not Sorry. wash your toilet paper. <laughs> we, we, we shifted into the wrong way. However, here's my other argument. If you are going to spend $4.99 on something that you would like to reuse in the future, I believe that you should invest in a good quality microfiber rag or just a regular rag. It doesn't matter. Those are around the same price and those you can wash. You do have to do laundry. However, it will be cheaper in the long run and more sustainable for our environment. Ooh, with four seconds to spare. I'm impressed. That was that was rough. That was good energy. This was, this altitude in Colorado is making me out of breath because that was so intense. Okay, so now it's my turn to argue the other side of this argument that washing and reusing used paper towels <laughs> is not is not cheap, but it is indeed frugal. Okay? <laughs> that is what I that is my my task here now. So I'm starting starting the microwave. Put one minute on the clock, starting now. All right. So this is more hard. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. Your time is ticking. <laughs> My time Chris. is ticking away. Okay. In all in all seriousness, mm. paper towels exist. They're already mm. out there. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Some people maybe they have easier access to a grocery store where you can buy a nice pack of paper towels. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes you use a paper towel, and all you did was like wipe your face, or you had a sandwich on it, and you had some crumbs on it. Knock the crumbs off of that. Rinse it off. Dry it and reuse it. And it, you're also not wasting these materials that you already have. And on top of that. You're, you're being responsible. You're making this conscious effort to reuse something that someone would just casually throw away, just toss aside like it was nothing in the trash, in the garbage, in our landfills. And you're making use of this. You're taking something old and beat up and you're making it new. And I think there's something beautiful about that process. And I think that that says a lot about a person and a human being. So I am all for reusing paper towels as a way of being frugal and not cheap. 
Oh. Oh my gosh. That was the best counter argument I have ever heard in my life. Thank you. That went to the soul mm-hmm. and the root mm-hmm. of humanity it did. and who we are as as a people group in this world fighting. <laughs> did you lose it? You lost, you lost it, didn't you? I tried. You, you did really it. great, though. Thank you. You, mm. you. you know what? I, I, I believe that this is a truly frugal act, mm. not cheap. Because I have to. And this is not an Do you believe thing. that in your heart? No, I will never wash paper towels and dry them. I'm never doing that. I did like your argument about it being just crumbs. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you make a sandwich and you're just gonna throw the paper towel and away. That's good. That's a good quality. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. You did not sway me. Okay. Well, this is the best part. Okay. We don't have to pick the winner. I'm we don't so have to decide. Grateful. I'm so grateful. Yeah. So now that you've heard both sides of the argument here, go to popcornfinance.com or go to the show notes and I have a link. There will be a poll. There will be two images. A picture of Bethany, a picture of me. You're going to have to go on there and vote for who you think argued their side best. And Bethany, before we go, mm. where can people find out more about you, the Money Millhouse podcast, and everything you have going on? Thank you so much, Chris, from Popcorn Finance. I really appreciate that. They can go to themoneymillhouse.com to find out more about our podcast. Download it where all podcasts are found, including Spotify, or go to Instagram at The Money Millhouse. I definitely recommend you do it. You're going to get tips on coffee. You're going to hear great editing. You're going to hear some great music. Bethany might even sing on an episode. You never know what you're going to get. And I enjoy it. It's a really fun show. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me again. Of course. I hope I redeemed myself. I I think you did. I mean, there was definitely a lot of smack talk happening, Mm -hmm. but that's just good, healthy competition. Yeah, that's all that is. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate you being here, Bethany. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, boy, keep it popping like Mary Poppins.